right, so we're here in Alameda, California, right in my backyard. We've got a herring spawn going on. We're about to pedal right into it and try and catch as many herring as possible with our cast nets. It's gonna be dope, it's gonna be dope. If you're going to San Francisco, be sure to wear flowers in your hair. Hello everyone, welcome to Outdoor School of Thought. I'm here with my friends Lawrence hey, hey, hey. and Jay. <laughs> we are here in Alameda. We're currently following the herring spawn that's happening. Usually in January, early reports show up that the herring show up to Alameda, typically first to do their herring spawn, then they head over to Richardson Bay and also Point Richmond. So we got a report on Los Anchovies blog and decided to come out and check it out. I know that someone was there last night and um, had a tough time on the rocks. So if you're out here trying to go for herring, please make sure that you focus on safety first. Um, obviously we are in the water right now. We are in the bay. <laughs> There's three guys in a 14 foot raft. Three and, guys on boat. <laughs> and we're really trying to get somewhere. Where are we? Where are we? We're trying to chase these birds that are over here. But stay tuned. This will be either a really good episode or a really bad episode. <laughs> so here we go. But I think there's a really good, bad idea. It's great. They do move in here. Y'all know where that's from? Jurassic Park, y'all. So there's definitely eggs on the eelgrass i'm here in Bolina bay the homies <laughs> we're here over by the buoy and yes there are herring eggs hello everyone outdoor school of thought here i'm here with kim <laughs> she is jetting down this highway because I'm heading to Sausalito for the herring spawn, but I'm currently in San Jose, so Kim's taking me to my car so I can go film this episode and catch these herring. It's gonna be a good one. Stay tuned. And just like my video last year, again, I'm stuck in traffic. Maybe they're all going to the herring run. I don't know. It's gonna go. Okay, so after about two hours of driving, I'm finally here in Sausalito. As you can see, I've got my I brought three cast nets because last time I went, someone stole one of my cast nets, so now I'm armed to the teeth. I've also got this perf perfect cast, which I'm going to try out, and hopefully it'll help me throw out some better pancakes with the cast net. So I'm going to make my way over to the water, and we'll see what I will catch. All right, so I'm over here by the Sausalito Ferry. Um, as you can see, we've got the herring spawn going on. What we got so far on the first cast? Your first cast net drop. So two seasons ago I was at Point Richmond and I was throwing a cast net cluelessly and another fisherman by the name of George taught me this technique. So in order to set up your cast net make sure you clear it properly, make sure the monofilament line inside the net isn't tangled and that your weights aren't snagged up. You can clear out your net by gently shaking your weights. This will clear out any debris or seaweed that's in the cast net. With your dominant hand, gently grip underneath the collar and then proceed to fold two-thirds of the net into your dominant hand. Then with your other hand, you're going to grab parts of the skirt starting at 12 o'clock and you're going to begin folding it into your dominant hand all the way to the 9 o'clock position. Then with your non-dominant hand, you'll grab everything from the 9 o'clock position all the way to the 7 o'clock position. Take this time to double check if your monofilament line or any of your weights are tangled up in the net. You want to make sure that the weights are on the correct side of the skirt and that they don't impede your throw. Throwing the cast net requires a twisting motion while in a lunging stance. Your dominant hand is going to lead the cast net in a counterclockwise motion around your body. This motion will cause the weights to spin out and open up the cast net as it descends down to the water. If you have good form and technique, it should look like a pancake falling down to the water. 
See the halat? Wow, look at that! Come on, take a picture. Come on, take a picture. Ay, ay, ay. Halat. During previous spawn years, I've used a 3 foot and a 4 foot net, but this year I chose an 8 foot net, and I have no regrets. Having a bigger cast net radius has allowed me to pull in more fish at one time, but the weight could be a problem and sometimes required two people to pull up. While I was fishing, a lot of people had questions about what I was going to do with the herring. Now, I like saving herring for bait, usually for crab, and also for halibut, but they're also really good for eating. They are a very delicate fish that's rich in omega-3 fatty acids. I like to eat them fried as well as pickled Norwegian style. And here's today's haul. Pretty good, 10 gallons. To prepare the herring for pickling, you want to make sure that you scale and clean them as well as remove the head. Once they've been cleaned, it's important to brine them overnight for 12 to 18 hours. We're going to use a very simple brine comprised of water, sugar, and salt. After letting the herring sit in the brine for 18 hours, go ahead and drain the bowl and then proceed to rinse the herring. To fillet the herring, you want to start cutting down all the way to the spine and then run the blade all the way to the back and out of the tail. Now located in the belly are the pin bones and you want to be able to remove them whole. So you want to find the pin bones and run the blade against them in a diagonal cut to remove the belly whole and all the pin bones will follow. Same goes for the other side, you want to run the blade down the spine and all the way to the back and out the tail. It's important to use a sharp knife, you want to be very precise with your cuts. You don't want to butcher the filet up because there's so little meat to go around. Also make sure to remove any of the fins that are still attached to the filet. Now for the pickling solution you want to add 2 cups of white vinegar to a stock pot of water. 2 teaspoons of allspice, 2 teaspoons of black peppercorns, 1 teaspoon of mustard seeds, half a cup of kosher salt, make sure you don't use iodized salt. Make sure you put a half cup of sugar as well. Put in a few bay leaves, and if you're a good forager, you can find these just walking around. I also added a few dashes of pre-made pickling spices. Let the pickle solution get to a boil, and then let it cool down before putting into the jars. So while the pickle juice is cooling down, I'm just taking some herring fillets and red onions, and beginning to stuff the jars. You might also want to add lemon slices as well as carrots. So while I'm waiting for the pickle juice to cool down, I'm going to throw these jars in the refrigerator because I need to go to sleep. It's a very long, tedious process to pickle. So the following morning, the pickle juice is cooled off and you're just going to ladle the pickle juice along with the spices into the jar. You should hold off on eating the pickled herring for at least a day just to make sure that the vinegar in the solution cooks the meat. But other than that, it should be a very sweet and salty uh, way of prepping. I hope that you found value in this episode. If you want to see some behind the scenes pictures and videos, don't forget to follow us on Outdoor School of Thought on Instagram. And also don't forget to support us on YouTube. Make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe so that you can get the latest videos from Outdoor School of Thought.